Attention, everybody. The views and opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of Axe Ministry, Axe Media Group, and or its affiliate and supporting ministries and nonprofits. Some of this content may be adult in nature. Probably not, but still use discretion while watching with your kids. Especially this show. Especially <laughs> especially this show and, and uh, 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 I can't think right now. It's too early. And they still don't see us yet. So I'm going to turn this music up. Oh, yeah. It's called I'm Forgiven. <clears throat> I love that song. During that recording, I forgot to turn the effect off, so you can hear me switch it. Like halfway through the first couple bars of the song. I, but I do. I, I love that song. Here we go. Good morning, everybody. The learning curve today. We're going to be not just learning about the equipment today. We're going to be learning interesting facts. Just Fun facts. and interesting facts. I mean, who says the learning curve has to be our software and our program? Right. You have to have facts. If you're going to learn about computers, you have to have facts. Well, these facts, most of the time, the, the ones we're talking about today, probably aren't going to have anything to do with our computer system. No. We got 100 interesting facts. I found an article, and uh, just to give you a taste of it, McDonald's once made bubblegum flavored broccoli. Bubblegum <coughs> broccoli. Okay, now, see, if I would have known that, I could have said, you know what, Mom, pass some bubblegum broccoli. <laughs> right? Bubblegum <laughs> bubble flavored broccoli. As if broccoli wasn't delicious enough. I think bubblegum flavored broccoli would be horrible. Actually, in reality, probably. Because there's, especially if it's not natural flavors and it's artificial and. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, good morning and welcome to the learning curve. <laughs> I about said the morning drive. Uh, as far as I'm aware, um, we uh, should be. Uh, having it's your call again today, uh, live or I think it's going to be live. Okay, good. That's if one of them's nose isn't <laughs> still broke. I mean, obviously, <laughs> poor be guy. Broke from it. Yeah, and I haven't heard why why his nose got broke, but uh, I still haven't heard. But you know, you know. Uh, so we uh, our our first show today was about getting ready for summer, right? <clears throat> and the biblical aspect of it, right? Which is you know, when a certain thing happens to an olive branch and it starts sprouting tender leaves, you know summer is near. Correct. So, but we should always be ready for that summer. That's right. All right. So today, uh, I was trying to figure out what we were going to talk about, what we were going to learn. I love you, Jay. Love you, Jay. Uh, what we were going to learn uh, and things like that. And uh, something just, you know, I was like, what, what, what about this software are we going to learn today? Well, we're not going to learn about software today. We're going to learn about weird stuff, interesting stuff, fun facts that you never knew you needed to know. Yeah. And then some. <clears throat> uh, the world, nay, the universe is a weird, wacky, fascinating place. And if you're looking for a few more than a few bits of random trivia to share with your friends or just boost your own arsenal of knowledge, we got fun facts galore about food, animals, geography, famous people, inventions, and everything in between. Stump your buddies with the, did you know, facts. Most Those people, are always fun. Yeah, most people don't know, too. And while these facts were quirky and cool, if they're not quite bizarre enough for you, we got plenty more weird facts, too. So this is uh, going to be interesting. So this, this is what, what I was like, okay. Fact. McDonald's once made bubblegum flavored broccoli. Could this you interesting that now? Yeah, this this interesting <laughs> fact will have your taste buds crawling. Unsurprisingly, the attempt to get kids to eat healthier didn't go over well. Shocker! Uh, with the child testers who were confused by the taste. Yeah, so broccoli. See, when I was a kid, I didn't like it, but as an adult, I like it. Yeah. The and same cauliflower? Thing. Love cauliflower. It all smells like a fart when you're cooking it. <laughs> yeah, and then you don't want to have it because who wants to have it? And don't throw your broccoli stems and, and stuff in the trash and leave them there because they will stank. 
done that. Stank. Oh, I've done it a couple times. Left it in my office. It was Ooh. horrible. Someone came in and said, what's that smell? Broccoli. Broccoli bits and pieces. And been what? In the heat. It smells like, broccoli smells like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in the summertime, <clears throat> whatever you do, if it's outside and you have garbage outside and you put it in summer heat, mm, mm, mm. Okay, so here's an interesting fact. Some fungi create zombies, then control their minds. Eh? Eh? That sounds like science fiction to me. Uh, it does, but in fact, it is a, uh, a relationship between a mushroom and an ant, apparently. A tropical fungus, uh, Orphid codiceps. Uh, sound it out. <laughs> Orphid. Orphicordyceps. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> Orphicordyceps. Uh, Bicep. Infect <clears throat> ants' central nervous systems, and by the time the fungi between, uh, by the time the fungi been in the insect bodies for nine days, they have been they have complete control over the host's movements. They force the ants to climb trees and then convulse and fall into cool, moist soil below hmm. where the fungi thrive. Once there, the fungus waits until exactly solar noon to force the, ants in, force the ant to bite a leaf and kill it. Wow. Ah, well, that's interesting. Wow, I didn't know that about plant life and fungi and... I don't know whether I'm in science class. Or science uh, you know, <laughs> that is that is interesting. It is. <clears throat> so it forces the ant to climb a tree and fall into the soil. And then and bite then into an Solar leaf. noon, the ant bites into the leaf. Uh, the leaf, I guess, of the fungus. I don't know. Right. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, the leaf. and then dies. Fact. The first oranges weren't orange. I did hear about that. I did hear that. Uh, the first oranges from Southeast Asia were tangerine palmello hybrid. And they were actually green. In fact, oranges in warmer regions like Vietnam and Thailand still stay green through maturity. I did not know that. That I did hear because um, my nephew told me yeah, about Isn't that, that called a lime? <laughs> That's what I thought. <clears throat> My nephew told me that, and that's that's how I found that out. Fact. There, There's only one letter that doesn't appear in any U.S. state name. Can you guess which one it is? Can you guess the answer to this? Um, what letter appears when? when uh, can you repeat that? And that's state name. You'll find a Z. Arizona, right? J in New Jersey, and even two X's in New Mexico. <laughs> really? Two, two X's? Two X's? Oh, New, Mex New Mexico and Texas. Oh. But not a single Q. Uh, that's true. You know, I was thinking of... One, Albuquerque? But yeah. and But it said state names. Fact! A cow bison hybrid is called a beefalo. You can even buy its meat in at least twenty one states. I bet it's I bet it's really beefy. Beefy. Bisony. Bisony. As you're walking bison. out, you say to your son, Bison. As it's going off to college. <laughs> yeah. What well, bye son. <clears throat> Tomato. No. Fact. I, let's not go back there. <laughs> Johnny Apple seeds fruits weren't were not for eating. Yes. There was a real John Chapman who planted thousands of apple seeds in U.S. soil. But the apples on those trees were much more bitter than those ones you find in the supermarket today. Johnny Appleseed didn't expect his fruits to be eaten whole, but rather made into hard apple cider. So that's what Jonathan Apple trees are. Uh, but I will tell you, Jonathan apples are my favorite apples to eat. They are. Because they're tart and sweet. Not too sweet. And when you take a bite out of them, big chunks come out, and it's really juicy. We had two Jonathan apple trees in my backyard growing up. 
and I absolutely loved it. Now, the flies really sucked. I mean, I hated that because they'd fall, you know, and but uh, and when, whenever you were running it over with the mower, I mean, it would get the mower all sticky and stuff. Oh, yeah. But I've I would that. grab a low-hanging fruit, pop it off, and be sitting there eating it, mowing the lawn and stuff like that. And they were just the right amount of tart and just the right amount of sweet. If they were half red and half green, like pinkish, pinkish red on one side and yellowish green on the other. Is that what they make apple pie? Is that a, yeah? That's what I thought. Jonathan yeah. apples are the best uh, they're, apples to make yeah. apple pies with because they they they've got intense apple flavor, but uh, you can add sugar so it doesn't make it too sweet. Makes it just right. Right, correct. But I eat those left and right. If they if I find them in the grocery store, I will I will buy some and eat them because they're good. I don't make pies with them. Pies are super high in sugar. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Making me hungry now. Uh, That's okay. Fact. Scotland has 421 words for snow. Yes, 421. That's too many fun facts about snow. Some examples. Sneeze. Sneasel. That's snow fun. <laughs> That's to start raining or snowing. Fifo to swirl. Flinker drinking. A light snow. Flinker drinking. <laughs> Flinker drinking. Oh, flink. Flink drinking. You know, I'm going to have to ask Cindy about that because uh, she was from she lived hey, in Scotland. Hey, look, it's Fleet drinking. It's Flink drinking. Like Abraham Lincoln is Flink drinking. Flink drinking. Flink drink. Sounds like you're grown drunk. So weird. <laughs> All right. So real quick, we'll be right back after these important messages. People that have mental illness are not weak. They're the strongest people I know because we've had to endure so much. And we're back. Axe Fest coming up here in a week. Yeah, a week it's gonna from be fun. Thursday, right? Fact. Today we're talking about facts. Mm -hmm. Do you have any weird facts that not many people know? I do, but not right off the top of my head. I might come up with it before we're done, but mm. not right off the top of my head. That's like the country next to Panama makes more Panama hats than Panama does. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of the country, but it's not Panama. Fact or fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. Fact. Samsung tests phone durability with a butt-shaped robot. Yeah, it's a robot butt. Robot butt? A robot. A robot? <laughs> um, do these interesting facts have you rethinking everything? People stash their phones in their back pockets all the time, which is why Samsung created a robot that is shaped like a butt. And yes, even wears jeans to sit on their phone and make sure that they can take the pressure. I always carry my phone in my back pocket too, and I'm surprised that I haven't broke the screen. These are top-notch screens. You know, I see so many people, young ladies, whether they're guys, but especially young ladies, I'm always seeing um, that they're always looking at their phone, and then I see them put them in their back pocket like a wallet, and I'm like, man, what if, what if they sit down and actually sit down pretty hard? Aren't they going to crack the screen? Hmm. <clears throat> yeah yeah and it's uh it's pretty handy although the problem is, is your butt can dial through your denim material it's called butt calling <laughs> yeah it's called butt dialing and that happens then i've had it one time my butt answered the phone and i've got these uh over ear um headphones that vibrate the jaw and the ear cannot yeah they're right there uh and i probably should find uh log in to our Facebook so I can <laughs> monitor See, any would be um would be facts fact telling people that might have some weird facts that we're not yeah. aware of and it would be nice to hear from you folks as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh I don't need one there. Let's go over here. Because Indeed. just because I don't doesn't mean that we don't have anybody out there that might not or that might have some facts that we're not aware of that would be nice to find out. Yeah. Uh, you know, I love weird facts. I do too. If you sit down, your phone could push itself out of the back of your pocket and fall. That is true, Johnny. True. That is true. 
That's see, that's what I was saying. You know, I mean, here's an interesting fact. Mm -hmm. Now, when you hear of Chicago, the Windy City, right? Right. Well, uh, according to this, the Windy City name has nothing to do with Chicago weather. Although I will say when I was there, downtown Chicago, it was very, very windy. Yes. And the buildings were so high that if it's not high noon, it looks like nighttime there, downtown Chicago. Yep, it does. And another interesting fact, they let you walk around with a container full of booze in downtown Chicago. They give you to-go cups at bars there. That was back when I drank. So I was like, yeah, all right, give me that to-go cup. Can I get a refill? You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so... Was this one of the was this one of the random facts that you already knew? Well, Chicago's nickname was coined in the 19th century. Journalists who were referring to the fact that the residents there were windbags and full of hot air. I did not know that. Yeah, now that I did know because um somebody asked me about the windy city and I'm like, I don't know if that means it's a really windy city and it's just known for wind, like you said, down there in downtown. But then I did hear about the windbags and, you know, people with a lot of air. Yeah. I did hear that. Yeah. And, and, but it's weird. It is weird. All right. So far. Oh yeah. Johnny Rooster is watching still, but, uh, I, all right. Oops. Morning, Johnny. Another fact. Peanuts are not technically nuts. Of course I knew that. They're legumes, which actually is closer to a green bean or peas. But really? it's, it's not a pea either, but it's a peanut. But it, it's a legume is a, is a type of, you know, green beans or legumes. Yeah, I, I have heard of them, but I didn't have any. According to Merriam-Webster, a nut is only a nut if it's hard-shelled dried fruit or seed with separ uh, separatable rind or separable rind. Uh, or shell, and internal kernel. Uh, that means walnuts, almonds, cashews, and pistachios aren't nuts either. They're seeds. Yeah, they are. You know, I know what, uh, you know, we're nuts. Yeah, we can be. Just like pe peanuts that you get at a circus that you feed elephants. Is that what you're talking about? Hard shell and, you know. Yeah, peanuts, they're, they're, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and cashews, I guess, are similar. But they're not peas either. I know that's, I never thought about that. I know that. it's weird. It's weird. It, that's a weird fact. <clears throat> yep. You know what else is a fun fact? Armadillo shells are bulletproof. Oh, well, next time you think about shooting one, you might have kill it. You might not. Um, one, uh, in fact, one Texas man was hospitalized when a bullet shot at an armadillo ricocheted off the animal and hit him in the jaw. <sighs> what a story to tell your friends. Wow. That's a draw dropping experience. <clears throat> that is a, <laughs> man. Well, you know, he wanted to he he wanted his shot and he got it. Yeah, ricochet. You know, I never thought of you know, you under you might see that in a comedy or in a cartoon, but to actually think about it, ricocheting off of a shell of an animal and then hitting you in the jaw, that's a little Yes, messy. John. Johnny. Pam and Jim are here. Uh Armadillo shells are not shovel proof. I can promise you that, Johnny says. The other red meat. Well, you have Tomatoes Johnny. are veggies. That's an interesting fact. That is it not is. a fact. It, and it's not a meat either. They're classified as a fruit. Well, it can be a meat after yesterday. <laughs> classified as a fruit. Oh, man, my, my hand psoriasis is all acting up again. Uh-oh. Oh, well. Psoriasis yeah. really stinks, too. Yeah. Another fact. I knew this because I was a firefighter. Ooh, okay. Firefighters use wetting agents to make water wetter. Did you know that soap makes water wetter? Water. That's water. why soap works. It makes water wetter. I, yeah. Adds more moisture. You know, because have you ever done the uh, like sail the little the little paperclip ship or whatever? You put it on there and then you put a drop of like dish soap behind it and it shoots it forward real fast oh, yes okay that's because what that is is that little bitty boat or whatever like you can sprinkle a bunch of black pepper on top of water 
But they did it in the old Don commercials. It takes grease out of your way where they put a drop in and it. Yeah, I've seen all. that. That yeah. really happens um, because what it does is it, 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 it destroys that top layer, that microscopic membrane that holds water together. Right. So, and essentially, it'll go into thinner spots, like microscopically, because there's no, there's no skin there. It's basically a water skin. You ever see an ant carrying a droplet of water on its head? Okay, there are some ants that do that. It's interesting. Oh, yeah, I've heard um, of that. That's because it has a little shell, essentially microscopic shell. And uh, whenever you put the dawn on there, it destroys it and it like breaks and like elastic it shoots it forward. It's interesting. Wow. Because it's under pressure, like micro amounts. So the chemicals reduce the surface tension of plain water so it's easier to spread and soak into objects, which is why it's known as wet water. Wet or water. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Some of, there has to be a enjoy your freedom treasonous colonials <laughs> it's got looks like margaret thatcher on the front of it <laughs> anyways <laughs> funny fact the longest english word is 189 or 189,819 letters long that's a lot of letters oh my goodness that's a lot that's longer than super gals fragilistic fialidocious <laughs> uh, the full name for the protein nicknamed Tin Tin would take three and a half hours to say out loud. We won't spell it out, though no. you can read it here, it says. It's better to read it, folks, than for us to try to... Well, I mean, if you have hours to read, it's 189,000... 819 letters long. Running amok is a medically recognized mental condition. Ooh. That's interesting. Let me so, check our, our, our stuff here. Super califragilist. That's what I was just saying. <laughs> super uh, super califragilistic expialidocious. Spell that. Johnny says he has a dead Amarillo to prove it. Broken shovel handle. Hmm. Interesting. Sounds like Jim is visiting with somebody in there. Yes. <clears throat> Running amok is a medically recognized mental condition. So is that what they mean by I'm running amok where we have a mental condition or yeah but well, con considering considered a culturally bound syndrome a person running amok in malaysia commits a sudden frenzied mass attack then begins to brood ah interesting fact octopuses lay fifty six thousand eggs at a time well that's a lot of omelets yes and you know what with as many tentacles or as many arms as they have I could very well be the mother spends six months so devoted to protecting the eggs that she doesn't eat. The babies are the size of a grain of rice when they are born. And they are. They're, they're little octopus, octopi. Um, like you said, that's a lot of omelets. <laughs> yeah. Cats have fewer toes on their back claws. Well, like not most four -legged according to my cat. <laughs> yeah. Like most four-legged animals, they have five toes in front but their back paws only have four toes. Scientists think the four toe back paws might help them to run faster. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The, the front paws, though, those are killers. <laughs> Kleenex tissues were originally intended for gas masks. I did not know that. That's interesting stuff. <laughs> when there was a cotton shortage during World War, World War I, Kimberly Clark developed a thin, flat cotton substitute that the army tried to use as a filter in gas masks. The war ended before scientists perfected the material for gas masks, so the company redeveloped it in the smoother and softer, then marketed Kleenex as facial tissue instead. 
is that what we were wearing now? Oh, wait a minute. That's supposed to be masks that we, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> or what did you call it? Some of them call them. Uh, Chin diapers? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to turn that AC off now because I'm. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get uh, goose pimples. So. It's, um. Oh yeah. Oh, we better watch that stuff. True. Doing that yawning. And that that's contagious. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So especially on a Sunday morning when you have to get up real early and have to drive an hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, I ended up having to go back to work for a couple hours last night. So I basically was up from one o'clock in the afternoon yesterday afternoon till about four o'clock this morning, <clears throat> which is a lot. And yeah, I was, you and know, you. So for me to yawn in front of you, I apologize. That's all right. I I may look kind of jittery at the moment, but I'm 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 really tired. I you, assure you. Yeah, you're <laughs> trying to keep yourself motivated or moving so that you don't fall asleep. Yeah, but well, I don't want to fall asleep. Um, blue whales. Did you know blue whales? Eat half a million calories in one mouthful. In one mouthful. Yeah, and that's nothing for them. That's probably not enough. Well, I mean, they go up, they find the krill, the krill what you cuse it, you know, which is like basically a, a baby shrimp or a plankton or something. I think it's like baby shrimp, like itty bitty shrimp, like it's a crustacean, I think. Right. Uh, or what do they call that? Uh, shellfish, I think. Anyways, these random facts uh, are mind-blowing. Those 457,000 calories are more than 240 times the energy that the whale uses uh, to scoop those krill into his mouth. That's real krilling. <laughs> so that's why they, and that's where you get the, uh, the idea of eating like a whale. <laughs> yeah. Well, whales are big. Whales are big. They're huge. They're like... Aren't they the biggest mammal or the biggest? They are the largest mammal on the planet as that we know of. You know, there might be, there might be bigger in the depths of the sea that we don't know. You know, you never know. Fact, that tiny pocket in jeans was designed to store pocket watches. Well, I mean, that kind of goes without saying. The original jeans given. only had four pockets, that tiny one, plus two more on the front and just one in the back. Huh. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. It's I a store change. It's a watch pocket, pocket watch. I I use it to hold my knife. I, I store extra change. Ah, yeah. Well, I don't store extra change there because I lose it. I'm like, where is it? And I'm looking in my regular pocket. Where is it? Oh, I can't find it. I've done that before. It's like, where? And Rachel would say, where did the, or where did it come from? Um, your other pocket. <laughs> You know, I need to, ah, here we are. So this week's uh, sponsor for uh, for the $100 giveaway is mm -hmm. Queen City Insane Asylum. Now you're thinking, what is that? Is that Insane Asylum? No, it is a football team, a semi-pro football team that Johnny has uh, gotten in to donate the $100 for the giveaway for the like, the like and follow campaign. So let's see what it's all about. <laughs> All right. Oh, that, that, made... showed, that that was a lot of fact there. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of fact. <laughs> um, fact: Turkeys can blush. Did you know that turkeys? But can But they blush. can't fly. They can. They can. Uh, they can. They're semi-flightless. I mean, I like they are semi-flight. They're a semi-flightful bird. Right. Like a partial flightful bird. Like they can. They can. They can flap their wings and glide for a distance, but they can't fly up in the air. Right. They just glide in the air and then go down. And so when they say they can, they can't fly. They can't fly like a like a regular bird would. But they, they can they almost can, fly. But they can do a gliding. Yeah, but they have to keep flapping their wings. Uh, chickens are the same way. Like a chicken can can definitely boost its forward momentum with its wings uh, up in the air. 
And I'd be okay with being able to do that. I guess you can do it once. You can fly once. <laughs> Use it wisely. It Use it wisely. <laughs> I was going to say, and that's all it might take. Because it's not, it's not the fall that kills you. It's that sudden stop at the end. Turkeys can blush. When turkeys are scared or excited, like when males see a female, they are interested Ooh. in the pale skin on their head and neck turns bright red, blue, or white. The flap on the flap of skin over their beaks is called a snood, also reddens. Wow. I didn't know that. That's interesting. So the next time I see a turkey and I see that they're changing colors, and it's like, oh, I know what they're going. <laughs> I know what they're doing. <laughs> Fact, most Disney characters wear gloves to keep an animation simple. The hand is really hard to draw, by the way. Oh, so that's where they get the glove idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, because the glove has three, the gloves have three fingers, and it's also wider, so you don't need the intimate detail. Uh, I, so. Right. With, with Mick, you know, the mouse that has... Mickey? You yeah. can say it. Yeah. yeah, Mickey. Anyway. Hopefully we don't get sued by Disney. Uh, or Minnie. Or Mickey or Donald. They they have be goofy. These, these they have these gloves and I thought, man, I always wondered why they always had glo gloves on. So that's really cool. I figured there was some really good explanation for that, but it's nice to know. Uh, Walt Disney might have been the first to put gloves on his characters, as seen in the 1929's the the Opry House starring Mickey Mouse. In addition to being easier to animate, there is one reason Disney opted for gloves. We didn't want him to have mouse hands uh, because he was supposed to be more human, Disney told a biographer in 1957. Wow. Yeah. Fact. The man with the world's deepest voice can make sounds humans can't hear. Tim Storms can't even hear the note himself which is eight octaves below the lowest G on the piano, but elephants can hear it. That's how elephants conversate, is by ultra-low frequencies that rumble. Like, they, I, I've seen a, a documentary on it where they, they had all these frequency uh, meters and these ultra-low sound meters, and they heard the elephants talking back and forth to one another in, in low frequencies so low that we couldn't hear them. Just like when the high frequencies is so high you can't hear it. That's why dog whistles, they can hear you. Just imagine what conversations going on around us that we can't hear simply because the frequency. Oh, man. You, that would be some sort there of... There might be a whole other language that we don't even know about because we just simply can't hear it. I'd like to be a fly on the wall to hear conversations. You might have to be a fly on the wall to hear that conversation. Literally. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Dogs can hear a lot more than we can. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes it's just like they listen um, or they hear you. They just don't want to listen. Right. <laughs> we got about five minutes. Um, the current American flag was designed by a high school student. It started as a high school project for Bob Heff's junior year in history class, and it only earned a B in 1958, his design had 50 stars, even though Alaska and Hawaii weren't states yet. Uh, Heft figured that the two would earn statehood soon and showed the government his design. After President, President Dwight D. Eisenhower called to say his design was approved, Heft's teacher changed his grade to an A. Wow. So apparently you got to get approval from the President of the United States to get something like that, to change your grade. Man, I wish I, back in history, I wish I had the president of the United States to prove mine. You know, and I was always thinking, there's something funny about a cow's face. You know, I, and looking back at that now, like every cow I've seen, I've, I've seen it, but it's been like, I don't really know what it is about this cow that kind of strikes me as odd or um, uh, just there's something about it. It's like, I don't know, some, some kind of familiar. Mm -hmm. Cows don't have upper front teeth. Really? Yeah. So looking at it now, I can see that. They look kind of like a person who's missing their upper front teeth. Let me think, ponder that for a second. Yeah, you know what? That makes sense. They do have molars in the top back of their mouths, although, uh, although uh, where you'd expect upper incisors, cows, sheep, goats have a thick layer of tissue called the dental pad. 
they use that with their bottom teeth to pull out the grass. Oh, Didn't know that. that's very interesting. Fact! Yes. Thanks to 3D printing, NASA can basically email tools to the astronauts. Yeah, you can 3D print in metal, hmm. plastic, uh, 